What's poppin' boss gang? Welcome back to CEO Prince Reactions. So um we have Jenna Aiko before they were famous on um, requested by Cora Gray again. She loved her before they were famous, so I'm a, I'm gonna give my girl right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm gonna make sure I make sure I get this reaction done for her. So here is the reaction to Jenna Aiko before they were famous. Now before I put on this video, it was three this was made three years ago. Like that's crazy. So you know what I'm saying? They probably should do an updated version. But um, Jenna Aiko is one of my favorite artists. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, man, I just want to, you know, chill, mellow, you know what I'm saying? Just want to relax. Jenna Aiko. Off the rip. That's the first person I think about. So I'm about to do a reaction to um her before they were famous real quick. So let's get right into it. But before we do, if you want to roll to 1K, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. And last but not least, make sure you hit that comment section and comment what videos you want me to react to, okay? I gotta get that. Get me right. Get me right. Or Janae Aiko drop tracks like While We're Young, Sativa, To Love and Die, and The Worst. Or hooking up with Big Sean romantically and musically and getting his portrait tattooed on her arm. Before she made string. She got the man whole face tattoo on her arm. I don't know what Big Sean did to her, boy. Jeez. The man's off her drivers. Janae Aiko grew up with four older siblings in a very musical home in Los Angeles. Her dad was an aspiring musician, as was her brother, and her mother managed her older sisters in a girl group called Girl. That's spelled with a Y instead of an I. Through connections established by her older sister's girl group, Janae first found mainstream success as a preteen associate of a boy band called B2K. But as a teenager, she would be burning some bridges after she left that. her recording contract with Epic to focus on her schooling. Who does that? But pissing off a record company was the least of her hardships. As a kid, her family home burned to the ground. And she had trouble fitting in school because of her mixed ethnicity. At just 20 years old, she became a single mother, and her brother tragically passed away just a few years later. Damn. Yikes. What's going on, guys? My name's Michael Gretton, documenting the life and career of Janae Aiko prior to fame, here for you all before they're famous. Now, I've covered a ton of other artists on this channel. In fact, I've got a playlist just for singers, so you might want to check that out. But let me know who you want me to document next. You guys gotta let me know in the comments down below, or you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at McCruttonApp. Aiko of Furuchilombo was born on March 16th, 1988 in Ladura Heights, California. The youngest of five. My mom and dad have five of us Damn. together. Three girls, two boys. We grew up like a pack of wolves. <laughs> music was a big part of her childhood, which is about everyone in the family involved in music in some way, shape, or form. Her mother, Christina Yamamoto, managed her older sisters in a girl group called Girl. Her father, Karamo Chalambo, his birth name, Gregory Wyclef Barnes, was a pediatrician with music dreams of his own. My father, he always had a dream of being a singer. He converted the garage into a studio. We would make songs back there. She also grew up with her four older siblings, Damn. including her sister, who you may know as the R&B singer, Mila J. I'm so proud of her because she definitely Mila J. my sister. Janae listened to Brandy all the time and says she fell in love with her voice when she was just six years old. Janae also cited numerous artists as musical influences, including Tupac, Eminem, Aaliyah, Kendrick Lamar, Kid Cudi, Beyonce, John Mayer, Alanis Morissette, Fiona Apple, TLC, and Lil' Kim. Lil as wasn't usual. always easy for Janae favorite. when she was in the second grade. The family's home in South LA burned down. As a preteen, she had trouble making friends. She claims that none of the cliques would accept her because of her mixed ethnic background. Janae's boy, that sounds like Cowboy. Janae was pretty when she was young. Who, how she had a hard time fitting in with anybody because of her mi her mixed ethnicity, F ethnicity, whatever. How, how does she have a hard time fitting in, bro? You feel what I'm saying? Like in, in, in kindergarten, like elementary, middle school, like y'all niggas are supposed to be on Janae Aiko, boy. Like Jesus. Mother has Japanese, Spanish, tripping. and Dominican roots. Well, her father is part black, look, look at her, bro. Part Jewish and part Native American. Fitting in. Yeah. To connect with the other kids. Shit. Well, Janae asked if she could be homeschooled. It just got to a point where people would be like, what, well, what are you? And I would be like, I'm a girl. Like, you know, I'm just a person. I didn't really feel like I didn't belong anywhere because I knew that I belonged with my family. Around this time, today's sister's girl group, Girl, was working with music manager, producer, and director Chris Stokes, and he would help Janae get her big break. He also managed the R&B boy band B2K, which included members Lil Fizz, Jay Boog, and Raz B. Then Amari and joined the group on... Damn, dog, Look at this greatness, bro. But I ain't gonna lie her. Chris Stokes was a pedophile, so no. Mm -mm. 
don't know. New Year's Eve, 1999. Chris looped Janae in on the project. Her singing was featured on their album. She appeared in their videos and she opened for them on tour. She was also widely marketed as the cousin of B2K member Lil Fizz. Yeah, it looks like they can be cousins. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and actually I'm cousins with Lil Fizz from B2K. Actually, she's not Lil Fizz. I ain't gonna lie, her and Lil Fizz do look alike, though. I ain't gonna lie. Now that, now that I think about this it. This is cousin. The group signed Epic Records in 2002, and the same year released their first number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 called Bump, Bump, Bump. Featuring P. Diddy, a.k.a. Brother Love. Here, Janae made seven guest appearances on B2K songs and got to work on what would be her debut studio album called My Name is Janae. The first single was called No Love. They even made a music video for the song, which you can find on Daily Motion. But I found something better on YouTube. Someone made a shot-by-shot -shot animated remake. Let's take a look. Janae continued to work with B2K regularly and labor on her debut album. It was set to be released in 2003, but it never ended up getting released because of tension between her and the record label Epic. Ultimately, at 16 years old, Janae got sick of her music career and asked to be released from her contract so she could focus on her schoolwork. It was really important to say that I completed something, you know? But I was still working with the producers I had met, like writing and singing demos and stuff like that. At the same time, she was feeling a closer connection to God and was baptized at the Evangelical Pentecostal Foursquare Church. While Janae had returned to a somewhat normal life, she never lost her passion for singing and was still connected to the music industry. She started dating the R&B singer O. Ryan in 2005. A couple years later, when never she completed her high school education, she enrolled in the two-year public community college, West Los Angeles College. There, she took voice lessons but would drop out after getting pregnant. At 20 years old, Janae gave birth to her daughter, Namiko Love. Her relationship with the father, Orion, would fizzle out around the same time, but Janae felt her life coming into new focus when her daughter was born. She stated, She gave me the focus, the drive, and the urgency to get something done. She told Complex, I have always been about getting work done, but with my child, something needs to happen, and she just put more passion as far as what I wanted to do with my music, what I wanted to sing about, and my message. After the birth of her daughter, Janae started to work at a vegan cafe and she would come home with swollen feet. At the same time, she was beginning to work on a mixtape to relaunch her music career. While working at the restaurant was paying the bills, she realized she couldn't do that and stay focused on her... See what I'm saying, bro? You never know what your journey gonna be like, man. Like, she was in the industry, got out of the industry, had a baby, trying to get back in the industry, working at a vegan restaurant, trying to, you know, get her, her, her stuff together. And look, look now, look music at Music at the same time. I couldn't do both, you know? I was too tired. And I remember one day I just was like, I can't go back to the to the restaurant. Like, I'm just going to focus on finishing this mixtape and just see what happens from there. So it was like a leap of faith. In 2010, she made a guest appearance on the Kendrick Lamar track, Growing Apart from Everything. Although it was 2011 that really marked the beginning of the second phase of her career. That year, she made guest appearances on songs by artists like Schoolboy Q and Ab Soul. She featured on the Hope Wright song, Body On Me, and released her mixtape, Sailing Souls, through her website, JanaeAko.com. She wrote all but one song on her mixtape, which featured collaborations with Drake and Kanye West, wow. and tracks like My Mind and Stranger. Sorry, My Mind threw me off. It's a weird title. In 2012, she would make guest appearances on a total of seven songs, and was hard at work on her next project, an extended play called Sail Out. The debut single from her EP was 3.16 AM. Career was finding its footing behind the scenes. Janae was struggling with a serious issue. Her brother Miyagi will eat brain cancer. My brother was my closest male relationship. Damn. He loved the music. And he put me on to my favorite artist. She recorded a song on her laptop, initially intended to be heard only by him, and called it For My Brother. Shortly after he listened to it, he died on July 19, 2012. Wouldn't be Whoa. the end of Janae's struggles. The next year, she was involved in a car accident in L.A., along with her daughter, Namiko, and baby daddy, Orion. She broke her wrist, chipped a tooth, and had to get stitches on her chin. Her daughter, on the other hand, was totally unharmed. Kids, they're so resilient. That's why they can eat Tide Pods and nothing really happens. I'm just kidding. I'm seriously, don't eat Tide Pods. Forget I even said that. They're going to demonetize this video. Let's move on. Janae's EP, Sail Out, was released on November of 2013. It hit number two on the U.S. R&B slash hip-hop chart and number eight on the U.S. Hot 200. It was also certified gold by RIAA and included singles like Ben Peace featuring Childish Gambino and The Worst, which was certified platinum and hit number nine on the R&B singles chart. Top I don't know none of those songs. I gotta listen to that. 97 million views on YouTube. Not bad. 
In 2014, Janae would release her debut studio album, Sold Out. The LP hit number three on the Hot 200 and number one on the R&B hip hop chart. The album featured singles Spotless Mind, Waiting, The Pressure, and To Love and Die. The same year, Janae was nominated for three Soul Train Awards, two AMAs, and two BET Awards. And the centric award for her song, The Worst. She would also be nominated for three Grammys in 2015. Behind the scenes, Janae would begin dating music producer Dot the Genius, and the pair would marry in July of 2014. They would separate around a year later in 2015, but most fans were unaware of- God damn, Janae, how many motherfuckers you were dating? I want- damn! ...their marital status until March of 2016, when Dot the Genius first publicly acknowledged the relationship in a birthday message on Instagram. In August of 2016, Janae filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences, that's it. Around this time, she would also begin dating Big Sean, and she clearly fell hard for him, eventually going on to get a tattoo of his face on her left arm. The pair would also put out a collaborative album called 2088 in 2016, which topped both the US R&B hip hop chart and the US rap chart. It also hit number five on the Hot 200. In 2017, Janae released her studio album, Trip with Songs While We're Young, and Stativa, featuring Sway Lee of Ray Schremmer. Before that the album was released, Janae also released a 23-minute long autobiographical film with the same name. So if you want to know more about her life, you should probably go check that out. But as for the rest of the story, well, I'm going to wrap this one up here because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael. All right, man. Thank y'all for watching, bro. I ain't going to lie. I did not know Janae dated that many people, bro. Like, Jesus Christ. And I ain't gonna lie, like, a lot of those old albums, I might have to go tap into those, because I ain't know she had that many albums out. You feel what I'm saying? And then, on top of that, Hun Lil' Fear do look like they can be related. But other than that, man, thank y'all for watching this. Um, Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, man. We're on the road to 1K. Make sure y'all like this video, and make sure you leave a comment on what videos you want me to react to. CEO Prince, we are. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I had a